Hello again everyone. This is likely to be the final systems guide for the Q400 before we move on to more procedural videos and the video this time will focus on the AFCS or Automatic Flight Control System. The AFCS provides a flight director which provides lateral and vertical guidance and the autopilot is coupled to this so as to automatically achieve the selected flight mode target. The autopilot is used to alleviate pilot workload and is usually engaged after acceleration altitude following departure though uh, the airplane can be hand flown longer than that and that's perfectly acceptable provided that the increased workload will not produce hazards. Here on the primary flight display we have an example of the flight director presentation. This bar gives us lateral guidance and this bar gives us vertical guidance to achieve the flight modes that we have selected. The flight modes are selected on the flight guidance control panel of course and any mode that we've selected is subsequently shown on the flight mode enunciator here at the top of the primary flight display for us to monitor and verify. Any mode that is armed but not yet captured, that is to say achieved, appears on a lower line in white and a mode that is both armed and captured appears on an upper line in green. So at the moment you can see the flight directors are giving us lateral guidance to follow the heading bug because we're in heading select mode. We're also in go around vertical mode which gives us a default of 10 degrees nose up pitch and this is selected by using the toga triggers on the power levers. Don't forget, unlike other aircraft with which you may be familiar on the Q400 because we don't have an autothrottle system of course, the go-around triggers only provide flight director nose-up guidance to 10 degrees, that's all they do, they don't advance the power levers, they don't initiate any kind of go-around procedure uh, and that's something to bear in mind, particularly if you're more familiar with the, uh, the jet simulations like the 737. The autopilot and navigation control is separated between pilots and this is toggled by using the HSI select push button. If the captain is flying the aircraft then the pilot should use the navigation aids tuned on the captain's side and his onside HSI should therefore be in control of navigation. And to verify this the arrow light will point to the HSI which is in control of navigation and in addition the non-selected primary flight display will show an HSI legend pointing to the active HSI. Pressing HSI select in flight will not disconnect the autopilot or your damper but will clear all armed lateral and vertical flight director modes and the HSI defaults to the left hand side on system power up. The heading push button arms the heading select mode which allows the pilot to select his own target magnetic heading using the heading knob. The selected heading is then referenced on the HSI using the bug indication. The heading bugs on the captain's and the first officer's side are both synchronized. The nav push button arms the navigation capture mode which allows the automatic capture and tracking of the selected navigation source. The various sources include the flight plan route in FMS1 which is the source we have selected at the moment as you can see. We can also select using the navigation source for each on-side HSI. the navigation aid tuned on nav receiver number one 
the navigation aid tuned on receiver number two or the flight plan route in the second flight management system should that differ from the first FMS and this function isn't used on flying the aircraft. When nav mode is selected the aircraft will remain in heading mode until the aircraft captures the selected navigation track in which case the deviation bar will start to move to the center and if we're in FMS1 mode then LNAV short for lateral navigation will appear on the flight mode enunciator and just to reiterate that is if the navigation mode we have selected is the FMS flight plan if we have the number one navigation receiver as our primary aid on the HSI then selecting nav will arm the VOR mode if we have a VOR tuned or the localizer function if we have a localizer or ILS frequency selected. The desired track or course of a selected navigation aid can be selected using the course selector for each onside HSI. This function however need not be used in FMS mode in which the desired track will be set automatically. The approach push button arms both the lateral and vertical modes to capture the tune localizer and glide slope frequencies respectively for an ILS approach. The Q400 can perform category 2 ILS approaches in poor visibility and this is also armed using the approach push button. For category 2 approaches there are a few other requirements to consider. First of all the ILS has to be tuned correctly on both navigation receivers. The correct course or track should be selected for the approach on both sides. Both source selectors should be in normal and the correct decision height should be selected on both sides. I will perform a full demonstration of a Category 2 approach in the Q400 in a later video. The BC push button is short for back course and as far as I know this this type of manoeuvre isn't approved for use in Europe so virtual flyby users need not consider it too much but it basically tracks a reverse localizer course or track if required. The standby push button doesn't disconnect the autopilot or your damper in flight but it does clear all armed and active flight director modes and also removes the flight director bars if the autopilot is not engaged. If the autopilot is engaged then it will revert the flight director to basic mode. The standby function should be used after landing to clear the flight directors and flight mode enunciator. The vertical modes on the Q400 are very straightforward actually uh, but it is vital to remember that with any new altitude selection the ALT cell mode must be selected and verified at the flight mode enunciator. If not then the aircraft is likely to go through its assigned altitude so every new altitude or vertical change must be associated with a check that the ALT cell mode has been selected and is armed at the flight mode enunciator. The IAS mode allows the aircraft to climb or descend at a pre-selected airspeed which can be selected using the nose up or nose down wheel. The standard climb profile after acceleration altitude in what we call a type 1 climb is to climb in IAS mode at 210 knots 
although we can revert to what we call a type 2 climb which uses 185 knots and this is for terrain and obstacle clearance purposes further climb after flight level 150 in a standard type 1 climb is usually achieved using the pitch hold mode which can be selected by simply depressing the IAS mode once again and we can then use the nose up nose down wheel to select a nose up pitch of 5 degrees beware that in this mode in the climb the aircraft airspeed is likely to decay somewhat and this should be monitored very carefully to make sure that the aircraft doesn't come anywhere near to the stalling speed the vertical speed push button allows us to climb or descend at a pre-selected rate of climb or descent in feet per minute climbing in vertical speed mode isn't permitted on virtual flyby aircraft although the descent is going to be done most likely in vertical speed mode once again we use the nose up and nose down wheel to select the rate of climb or rate of descent that we require and also I think it's useful to remind you uh, with any new altitude mode any change in vertical profile then the out cell mode must be selected and verified at the flight mode enunciator the VNAV push button allows the aircraft to capture the vertical profile computed by the flight management system though because of the somewhat haphazard nature of the vertical navigation mode in the Q400 in real life uh, this mode isn't currently permitted for virtual flyby users anyway it is standard procedure to use the vertical navigation function in the flight management system to calculate a top of descent point and I will show you that uh, in a later video but we don't use the VNAV mode to control the aircraft in the descent this should be done by using the vertical speed mode and the alt cell function of course